Welcome back to the Lumios Post where we talk about all things Pokemon and today we're going to be talking about how the Pokemon company has actually revealed two new types uh, and now you may immediately go like oh well what are they weak to and what are they good against and all that and it's actually not that kind of type uh, so this is kind of hard to explain but we're gonna break this down today so traditionally when we think of Pokemon types we see things like fire water grass you know every Pokemon has them uh, for example Bulbasaur over here. This is a grass and poison type Pokemon, uh, whereas like Greninja is a water and dark type. And then of course those types determine how they kind of function in the game. Like grass types will beat water types, but are weak to ice types, etc., etc. Well, there's more than just those types of Pokemon. We actually see other, I guess a better word for these types would be classifications of Pokemon. I'm not talking about the classification you'll see in a dex entry like how uh, for example Dracovish is listed as the fossil Pokemon but instead I'm talking about more of groups of Pokemon so a great example of this are dragons while there is the dragon type there is also just dragon Pokemon this is actually confirmed by Lance of all people who's like the expert on dragons mind you uh, in Pokemon Masters he states that oh you're wondering why I use a Gyarados when a Gyarados isn't a dragon type Pokemon well you don't have to be dragon type to be a dragon so this kind of then retroactively confirms that Lance is a dragon trainer but not a dragon type trainer so he's going to use Pokemon that are dragons but aren't necessarily dragon type which means things like Charizard uh, Aerodactyl, Gyarados, all of those would be dragons, even though none of them have the dragon typing. Uh, you could say that the egg group is kind of where this is coming from, right? Because Charizard is in the dragon egg group. So that would make sense. But there's even classifications beyond this. Uh, we see in the game, there are things like mythical Pokemon, Ultra Beasts, Legendaries, um, Paradox Pokemon. You know, these are more types of Pokemon. These, again, do not affect type functionality. Like, they don't affect how they're going to function in battle. Like, Ultra Beasts are not going to be weak to Paradoxes, but beat Mythicals. It, it doesn't work like that. But they're just a way to group these Pokemon together. And I think it's really interesting because it can teach us more about Pokemon and kind of learn more about the different ways things are classified in the Pokemon world. And that's really interesting to me because in the real world, that's how it is too, right? Like... I have a dog and my dog has a lot of different terms you could use for her, you know for one she's a dog that is the animal she is but then also she is a canine she also is a mutt that would be like the dog breed she is she actually is something called a super mutt but that's a whole nother can of worms for a, another time on a non pokemon related video uh then also she is a mammal you know she's all of these things there's different classifications and she falls into multiple of them and i love that they're doing that with pokemon they're introducing these new things that pokemon fall under so what are these new types these types are actually the blossom and the avian types uh, also too we have uh, fossil pokemon kind of being retroactively confirmed as a group of pokemon I, I don't know if they've ever used that term before i know that we as fans have always referred to fossil pokemon as fossil pokemon you know these are the pokemon that you if you can believe it get from fossils but I, i'm not sure if they've ever actually used the term in game other than the generation 8 fossils that being dracovish arctivish arctazolt and dracozolt uh, they are all classified in the decks as the fossil pokemon but I don't know if they've ever actually confirmed that that is a group, but they have now. So where this is all coming from is on the Pokemon Center, at least the US one. I'm not European, so I don't use the European one. I'm not Japanese, I don't use the Japanese one. But on the US Pokemon Center website, there are now these posters. I actually, uh, you can actually see that I have one there, uh, one there, and one over there. And these show these Pokemon. I'm going to show them on screen now, but they break it down they're avian pokemon and these include a lot of our uh, bird pokemon right so pokemon like noctowl altaria interestingly enough though this doesn't just mean flying types right because some flying type pokemon are left off of this like for example uh, charizard charizard's not on here but also it includes some non-flying types like you see galarian farfetch'd is listed on here when galarian farfetch'd is a fighting type pokemon only it is not any other type it's pure fighting 
Uh, then we have Blossom Pokemon. And so these are, I guess how you would define this is these would be Pokemon that exactly that blossom somehow. So all of these do actually happen to be grass type, but they're not all the grass types, right? Like there's Cradley and there's uh, some flora. Oh, and interestingly enough, we do have some non-grass type Pokemon on here with the Flabebe line. Those are pure fairy. So again, it, we're seeing different classifications of this, and I love this. I'm. I hope I'm not the only one who gets excited about this stuff. Maybe this is like just the uh, like super nerd thing that I have. I think everybody has like this one thing that they're like a super nerd with, and this is mine. Uh, Pokemon and classification is mine. So this blows the door open for us to one day get uh, more different classifications of Pokemon and hopefully I can get some more posters for this room uh, that break down other like types or groups or classifications of Pokemon, right? Like a great example that I think of is aquatic Pokemon. Aquatic Pokemon would include a lot of water types, sure, but it would also include some Pokemon that live in the water but are not water type. Like for example, Graplocked is a Pokemon that is often depicted in the water, but is not a water type. Also too, this wouldn't include every water type, right? Because a Pokemon like Swanna, this is in the avian classification. And while they might visit water, they're not purely aquatic. They are not living in the water. Then you have fish Pokemon and these would uh, kind of leave some of the other aquatic Pokemon, right? Like Graplocked would not be a part of this but this would include your more Pokemon that are based off of fish, things like Alomomola, Basilin, those kinds of things, and maybe even including some other Pokemon that are fish, but aren't water type, like for example, Stunfisk is the one that comes to my head because that's based off of a flounder, which is indeed a fish. Then you have other Pokemon like Parasitic maybe, like this could be Pokemon that will in some way take over another Pokemon, right? Like how, uh, obviously, Parasite's a great example because it literally has a Parasite on it, but even things like how Shelter will bite onto a Slowpoke forever altering that Slowpoke, unless, of course, it lets go, but you get it, like, it it completely alters that Slowbro, and there's definitely other examples of this. Remoraid attach themselves to Mantyke, um, and that causes them to evolve into Mantine. Uh, and, and even maybe you could go further with that and say other examples of Pokemon that kind of get impacted by another Pokemon, like how Pancham only evolves into Pangoro when a dark type Pokemon is in the party with it. So this is just really cool. Uh, the, the love of research in me just adores this. And it also makes me think this could be a fun way to actually change the game. Cause that's what most of us care about, right? Is this may not be relevant at all to any of you if you only care about how it would affect the games because at the moment this does not affect the games it does nothing right it doesn't change how it functions in battle it doesn't change what's weak to or good against but maybe we could see something like this in game think how perhaps we have a grass type gym leader but instead of being a grass type gym leader this is actually a blossom gym leader so this person is using blossom pokemon which as we've seen from the poster can include some non-grass type pokemon like florgus or perhaps, again, someone uses avian Pokemon. So they are also using a Galarian Farfetch'd on their team. And there's other great examples of this too. And, you know, of course, if you go into making your own like aquatic or fish, you, know, you can have trainers do that. And I don't know, I think it will be a lot of fun to have a gym that does that, have a whole game where all the gyms do that. So the challenge is a little bit harder because I can't just go to this uh, flying type gym and spam electric moves because he's going to throw out a Galarian Farfetch'd which isn't necessarily weak to electric types and it might keep me off guard right I, I have to plan my team a little bit better another way to have fun with this in the games would be how I always think of the battle frontier right the battle frontier was so unique because it changed the battles up it, it made you have to do special things whether it was renting your own team or doing a weird arcade game before you battled or if your Pokemon battled on their own and their natures would kind of affect what happened in the battle. Uh, all of this sounds like a battle facility to me, like a battle facility where you can only use avian Pokemon. Everybody's going to use avian Pokemon. So I have to build the best possible team of my avian Pokemon. What other 
avian Pokemon will I be able to expect? And what Pokemon should I bring to counter those? Those kinds of things I think will be just super neat. Uh, it's, I don't know. Like I said, this is just something that I could just fangirl over all day. And also, it's a perfect time to talk about how I'd really like the Battle Frontier bag. But yeah, so let me know what you think of these avian Pokemon, fossil Pokemon, blossom Pokemon. Let me know what other kind of classifications that haven't been introduced in game yet that you could make uh, in the comments below and what kind of Pokemon you could include in it. And until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see all of you later.